volta. I decided that I was going to look and see what I could find concerning book banning in the news over the last year. And I found some very encouraging things, and I found some things that were kind of disturbing. So here, you would think this is Nazi Germany in like in 1939 when they were going around and burning books. Oh no, this was in Tennessee. I think it was February of 2022, and they were, let me just go ahead here. They were bringing some books, and the American Library Association has pointed out that this banning of books has intensified a lot, almost nearly double the numbers from last year. So the Tennessee pastor urged his God fearing folk to get out there and purify the community by burning Harry Potter and Twilight, any of the books in the series they can lay their hands on. Now, ironically, that can have an opposite effect because if they buy these books then the author gets the royalty and it could even lead to another edition being printed. So these are some of the ironies of book banning, but nevertheless, it's a very serious kind of thing. I never thought I would see any place in this country where people were burning books. It's very disturbing to me that that's happening. I'm going the wrong way. North Carolina tried to ban the whole week. This was started at the Republican convention. Oh, aren't we surprised? She's just really surprised. The Republicans did a petition. Oh, do you know what your child is reading? Oh, you may be shocked by what they find in their school. Well, if you're a parent, you certainly know what they're reading and you discuss it with them. And if you have boundaries, you set the boundaries and that's that. Don't need the government to do it for you. So this was in, June of this year in Greensboro, and it led to the school district banning the whole week. And then there was a media, just a media frenzy over it, and it got published wide and far and wide, and people were really upset about it. So then they retracted the ban. So You can see that they hit a, a 21 year high. This is kind of interesting. Some years it's up higher than other years. And in 2020, because maybe because of the pandemic, we didn't have very many, not very much going on. But this last column is for 2022. Now, the reason that the figures are for 2022 and not 2023 is because they can't get the figures together until the end of the year. So it's always for the year before these things are done. So for the school year of 2021 through 2022, there were 138 districts in 32 states that banned books. And these are Statistics reported by Pan America, and this is an organization of writers and authors. Harper's Bazaar published an article not too long ago in September, interviewing eight authors on how it feels to have their books banned. And, and so the little paragraph about the article says, Stories change our hearts, expand our worlds, and challenge what was. Storytellers have always threatened those in power, but today the stakes are dire, as book bans and attacks on public libraries 
and Greece across the United States. These authors of some of the most banned books in America are on the front lines. And when it gets to the public library, this is me, a real danger sign because it has always involved school libraries. That's where we expect challenges and banning. But public libraries, that says that you and I can't be exposed to certain books, that we can't go in there and check out a book because somebody has decided that we should not have access to it. Book bans often start with one person and it turns into sometimes sort of a, a mob. It's related to mob mentality. It is a mob mentality because they don't attack the library or anything, but it's related to it because without even reading the book, a bunch of people will agree that it should be restricted, should be banned. So this is the book in the guy's arm is Amanda Gorman's book, and that's been banned a lot. This is partly because there are some places where any book written by an author of color is banned. Any book that involves discussions of culture or heritage traditions of non-white families, those are banned. So it's, it's time for us to reflect and think about if we really are a nation of the First Amendment, the right to read and think and speak freely. The University of Chicago has pushed back and Governor J.B. Pritzker made an announcement that banned books will be accessible both digitally and in paper copies, not only to the university in Chicago in the area, but to everybody. And they are working right now. There's some digital group they're working with to see if they can make this a national response. So there is good news. It's always good that we have some good news. This girl is from Miami, Florida. This is uh, Iris Mogo. And she recently started a band book club because her school district and the public libraries in the area are restricting access to certain books. And so, she started a club. This is something that's happening around the country is some young people are starting their own anti-censorship and bad book clubs where they can meet and read books and discuss. And isn't that marvelous? And that was sort of critical thinking that makes, that that makes this country great. Sorry, I don't have any red hats for you, but. It does make this country great when you have young people of that much initiative. So go Iris. So Tara Hout, Indiana Tribune Star just ran an article this week and they were talking about how to fight book banning and the author in the colorful shirt she writes about LBGTQ plus themes, and she was interviewed, and so was a book critic for the Washington Post. And the most important thing we can do is show up, go to school board meetings, go to the voting booths, make sure you know who's running for office and where they stand, ask them questions about these things. And if we show up, then we can stop this kind of oppression. Leah Johnson opened a bookstore. This is the woman in the shirt, devoted to banned books called Loudmouth. She said she was always her dream as an author to open a bookstore. 
but she opened it so she can sell nothing but books out of the bag to make sure that they're available. The Indiana bill restricts access to banned books. It's easier. The extremists can get the books they don't like removed, and the librarians can be convicted of violating the bank terms in the law and can even go to jail. It's outrageous. Just outrageous. Seriously, we don't have anything better to do than Harris librarians. This sounds like a plot of, of 1984 or something, doesn't it? It doesn't even sound like the United States of America. And that's it. That's fine. I'm done.